Hey folks, uh, welcome back. Greg Sildman here for another session of Come Learn With Me. Just a refresher, what we do is we monitor all the articles that we curate and we see which ones get the most likes and shares, etc. And then um, present them again here, first in a word cloud, and then I will read them with you and highlight the uh, important points. So no surprise, uh, a couple of interesting articles from last week related to SPACs and the SPAC rush. So let's jump in and let's let's find out more about this. So it's called a look inside VC firms joining the SPAC rush. And it's from Feb 24th. So that's not, not too long ago, a couple of weeks, two, three weeks. Okay. Blank check companies. This month's batch, batch of SPAC filings included its fair share of venture capital firms with at least three firms filing S1 documents with the US Securities and Exchange Commission in February. Larer, Hippo, Kosla Ventures, and Advanced Capital all formed SPACs according to SEC filings, with Kosla Ventures forming four blank check companies. Forming a SPAC is another way for VC firms to allocate capital and to serve their limited partners, Jeffrey Weinberg, Senior Managing Director at DF King & Company, said in an interview. It's definitely a trend, Weinberg said, of VC firms... Oops. Go away of VC firms forming blank check companies. I think SPACs are going to stay. I think it's a question of what level. SPACs have been cropping up at an unprecedented pace. So far this year, more than 160 SPACs have raised over 48 billion in gross proceeds. In comparison, last year, also a record year for SPACs, 248 blank check companies raised 83 billion. SPAC activity has been so high that some believe SPACs will outpace traditional IPOs. When a VC firm, actually, let's just get these guys in all form specs. Okay. When a VC firm forms a spec, it essentially, it's essentially performing a role of an investment bank for a target company, according to Endurance Advisory Partners Managing Director Stephen Patrick. The idea behind a VC firm forming a spec is that the firm has all the information that enables it to figure out the right structure for the IPO and the firm is therefore better positioned to execute the IPO than an investment bank. A lot of the decision process from the company management perspective is who do I know and trust to come up with the best structure to make sure I have a well-received public offering, Patrick said. It used to be the investment bankers in that role of the trusted advisors. In, this, in the cases of the venture capitalists, the people who know best are the VCs that are, manage, that are the management team of the SPAC. Having a VC firm form a SPAC and take the company public also has its drawbacks, according to Patrick. A VC firm will likely target its own portfolio companies to acquire, meaning they have conflict of interest when it comes to allocating primary and secondary shares. The incentive for a VC firm to take the company public through a SPAC comes down to the money. The firm helps take the company public and typically gets about 20% of the SPAC value because it served as the SPAC management management team. That hefty management fee and the money involved makes it possible that other investment firms like private equity firms will likely join the SPAC train as well, according to Patrick. SPACs once looked down upon have become mainstream and are no longer viewed in the same category as penny stocks and the Wolf of Wall Street kind of behavior. There's enough money in the SPAC world that almost anybody that's approached to manage a SPAC would say, sure, I'd love to do that, Patrick said. Below, we look at the SPAC filings of venture capital firms for February. Larer Hippo, Hippo Acquisition Corp. Filing February, S1 filing, Feb 12 to 2021, key names. Kenneth Larer, managing partner and co-founder of the Huffington Post. Oh. Ben Larer, managing partner of Larer Hippo and former CEO of Group 9 Media. Eric Hippo, managing director of the Larer Hippo and former CEO of the Huffington Post. Ariana Huffington, CEO of Thrive Global and founder of the Huffington Post. The rare Hippo declined to comment about its back, but some of the players in the blank check company include the former founders and entrepreneur Ariana Huffington. Huffington and the founders of the firm have professional history. Kenneth Larer is the co-founder of the Huffington Post, and Eric Hippo served as CEO. Thrive Global 
was founded by Huffington, also Councillor Rhea Hippo and in this stuff. Okay. That's interesting, I guess. Kosla. 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 Kosla Venture Acquisitions. S1 Fonzie, period 12, 2021. Key names Binod Kosla, founder of Kosla Ventures. Derek Anthony West, Tony West, Chief Legal Officer of Uber, and brother in law of Vice President Kamala Harris. Oh, that's interesting. I think it's that in the notes. Maria Schossler, founder of Oscar Health, Costler Ventures Acquisition Company 2, founding date February 12th, 2021. Key names Vinod Kostler, Samir Kaul, general partner at Kostler, Peter Buckland, partner, managing part, director, and CEO of Costler Ventures. Costler Ventures Acquisition Company 3, founding same date. Key names Vinod Kostler, Samir Kaul, Peter Buckland, managing, partner, managing director, at, and CEO at Costler Ventures. Costler Ventures Acquisition Company 4. So they're going uh, all in, right? Um, same date and same folks. Costler Ventures declined to comment on its multiple stacks. Among the names mentioned are Vinod Costler, founder of the firm, and Derek Anthony West, better known as Tony West. West is the chief legal officer at Uber and also happens to be Vice President Kamala Harris's, Harris's brother-in-law. Oscar Health founder, Maria Schlosser, was also listed in the paper with an Oscar Health as a portfolio company of Costler Ventures. Advance it, Corp. 1, filing 17 February. Key names Jason Ostheimer, partner at Advance it. Alex Kassan, former managing director at Anchorage Capital Group. Tony Carter, CEO of, of QA, founder of Atom Factory, where he worked with Lady Gaga, former manager of artist John Legend and Megan Trainer. Advanced Capital declined to comment among the expected players in the SPAC. Management at Advanced Capital is Troy Carter, the CEO of music tech company q &A. Carter also founded Atom Factory, where he worked with the likes of Lady Gaga and managed John Legend. Some of Advanced's notable portfolio companies include Headspace and Public.com. You know, Headspace, that's the, uh, the meditation app. So maybe that means each spec goes in that, you know, a certain niche area. Not a VC firm, but wow. Although the following spec isn't founded by a VC firm, we did a double take when looking at, at the names behind it. So it, it so wanted to include details anyway. Forest Road Acquisition Corp, not a VC firm, but an interesting recent spec filing. Filing 18th of February. Key names Shaquille O'Neal, former NBA player. Kevin Mayer, former Disney exec and brief CEO of TikTok. Martin Luther King III, human rights activist and son of Martin Luther King Jr. Wow. Well, oh, that's a star studded roster. Not sure what that means. But this isn't the first time we've seen some of these names in a spec filing. The first Forest Road Acquisition Corp, which involved much of the same management, agreed to merge with Beachbody and MYX Fitness. And now a second spec has been formed. Among the notable players are Shaq, pun intended, who also happens to be an early investor in Google. And Kevin Mayer was most recent CEO of TikTok. Let's just make sure we get the name. Uh, Forest Road. Well, there you go, folks. Interesting. Who's climbing aboard the spec train? Hope you enjoyed that and learned a bit. Join us for another session of Come Learn With Me soon. Take care.